Have you ever been driving down the road and seen a sign that said estate sale and wondered about it? Your estate is made up of everything you own, everything that has been entrusted to your care. When you take your financial inventory, you will discover that you have assets, things that you own, and liabilities, things that you owe. When you start to plan ahead for your estate, you will want to know what is in each unit. Estate planning is deciding in advance who will benefit from your estate and who will be your agent in the settling process. Planning ahead has lots of benefits. You can transfer wealth on your terms and ensure that your loved ones are properly supported. You can choose personal representatives who will manage your medical and financial affairs in case of incapacity before anything bad happens. You can extend your legacy through trusts and bequeaths. Planning ahead will minimize court costs, professional fees, and estate taxes, and may also help protect assets from lawsuits, divorce, and irresponsible beneficiaries. In order to create your plan, you need to know how to use the tools available to you. These tools will help you determine heirs, beneficiaries, executors, trustees, guardians, and power of attorney agents. The people that you have chosen to execute your plan will complete necessary documents, ensure estate liquidity, and share your intentions with those whom you love. These plans are not static, but can change. Over time, the plan needs to be monitored as you age. The things you may need to take into consideration are your family status, your financial status, and any new intentions or goals that you may have concerning beneficiaries or assets, and certainly keep in mind new tax laws and legal changes as well. When you die, there are four ways that your assets can transfer. The contract way by designating beneficiaries, by operation of law such as titling of assets, by a will, or by a revocable living trust. The first way, the contract way with beneficiary designations is the most familiar way. This is when the beneficiaries, a named person, organization, trust, or even the estate automatically receives the assets upon death. These assets are not controlled by will or subject to probate. Another contract way is payable on death or transfer on death accounts. Sometimes the beneficiaries are designated by the per capita method where shares are divided equally among the named beneficiaries only or the per stirpes method where shares are transferred to descendants. The second way that assets are passed is called the operation of law. Joint tenants with right of survivorship is where there are at least two owners and the surviving party receives the other party's percentages. This bypasses probate. Tenancy by the entirety is only for married couples. The estate passes by law to the other surviving spouse. And then with tenancy in common, this is when two or more parties own interests that may or may not be equal. In this case, there are no rights to survivorship, which means the living owner will not become the outright owner of the deceased party's percentage of ownership. If you are married, where you live can also determine how your property is shared. If you and your spouse live in a community property state, such as Arizona, California, and others, the assets you purchase or invest in are considered owned equally between you and your spouse. The third way assets are transferred upon death is through a will. A will is a legal written document that details the terms on how a person's estate should be managed and distributed after his or her death. It is a public document at death. A review is necessary if you move to a different state as each state has their own laws concerning wills. When writing your will, there are some things you might need to take into consideration. Who will you name as your personal representative or executor? 
This is the person who administers the estate. Who will you name as the guardian for your children? If you designate a trust, who will be the trustee for the account? And lastly, who will be the named heirs for the will? Who will your property and assets go to when you die? The fourth way to transfer assets is a revocable living trust. In a revocable trust, the assets are titled to the trust while alive. This form of distribution allows for the family left behind to avoid probate after your debt. It also prevents court control of assets at incapacity and allows quick disbursement of assets. Seek out a professional who is an expert in writing trust. Not every attorney specializes in this field. Should you become incapacitated, a power of attorney is a legal document that allows a designated representative to act on your behalf. This could be for a financial or medical issue. It could be broad or very specific. The power is revocable by the giver and will cease at death of the giver. Or it could have springing power and begin when specific event occurs. Sometimes the document has durable power and is immediately effective. It continues in the incapacity or disability of the giver. A living will, or most often now called an advanced directive, is a document that guides health care professionals and your family in case end-of-life care is needed. It defines the medical treatments allowable to keep you alive. There will be questions to answer on the document about resuscitation, mechanical ventilation, tube feeding, dialysis, palliative care, and organ and tissue donation. People sometimes find this a difficult document to fill out. Seek the guidance of your family and help them understand your wishes. When writing a trust, like writing a will, there are some key things you must decide. Who will the grantor be, the creator and funder of the trust? Who will the trustee be, the person who is responsible for managing the trust? Who will the beneficiaries be, ones who are named to receive benefit from the trust? What will the trust agreement look like? The trust agreement defines the purpose, termination, assets, trustee role, and responsibilities, as well as access and distribution of assets to grantor and beneficiaries. What is the corpus, the principal value of the trust assets? All these questions will be answered with a trusted attorney who is familiar with trust law. A letter of instruction is a personal letter that helps a person step into your shoes and know your affairs. It also clarifies your wishes. It is a good way to sharing your final wishes and arrangements, contact information and access to account information, as well as any personal messages that you wanna share. Now the question we need to ask ourselves is, what happens when you don't have a will? I am often asked if having a will is really necessary, particularly if a person doesn't have any children. When a person dies without a will or living trust in place, the legal term is that they have died intestate. The court decides personal representatives and how probate assets are distributed based on state law. Typically spouses, registered domestic partners, and blood relatives inherit under intestate succession laws. State takes assets if no relatives can be identified. This is rare. The question is, do you want the state to decide how your assets are distributed or do you want to decide? Planning ahead is important in order to protect your loved ones and your assets. Writing a will and naming people to carry out your wishes before you die takes a bit of time, but time well spent. It is a way to give yourself and your family a peace of mind.